In this week's vlog, there's a load of crazy holidays, so we just have one car in. You get to see the Focus RS that we didn't vlog, and I talk rupees and the idea. You can check it out straight after this. Hey there guys, I'm Alan and welcome to AM Details. We bring you car care and detail related videos every week. Subscribe and make sure you smash that bell so you get a notification every time we go live to answer your detailing questions. Quickly before we dive into this one, we're catching up. So this video is the week not directly after Wax Talk, but the week after. As I said, we did a Focus RS, but it didn't get filmed as it was just the gents, but you get to see it for a little bit in this vlog. I'm then gonna to chat to you about what I've been working on, all in times I've been going on doing something, but I can't tell you about it. It's gonna get revealed in this vlog, reference to rupees and the idea. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. See you in a bit. Good. Morning. It is Monday the 31st of July and I'm sure I say it every time but where is 2017 going? Tomorrow starts August. Whew. And this week's a bit of a funny one with leave. Jamie is off Monday, Tuesday. I am off Wednesday, Daddy Daycare. And then Thursday, Friday, Scott is off. So we've got one car in the bay all week and I am back upstairs on the orders. And up first we have the two winners from Gincana Grid Vlog. If I've done them already because they were a bit rainy and I wasn't entirely sure they're going to edit, ding, they're up there. If I haven't, uh, you'll find them soon. Here we go. Okay, I'm sorted. Now we need you. Come here. I'm a detailer. Fuck you. Have a blast. Eight M D Tails. M D E T A I L's. Team. Woohoo! In you go. And now, we just gotta do the rest. All done. Thank you guys. Ding! And the RS from last week, which I'm afraid we don't have a vlog on. It was the week I got back from Waxstock. It was chaos. Just didn't film. I wasn't around a lot. So, we had this lovely RS in. For single stage, G10 and Coins, and it leaves today. And up next, we have this Jaguar. I think that is my favourite colour. And that is the Jaguar inside. I've been doing some VAT returny stuff. So I've not been on the car, Scott's got it all sorted. We have just surveyed it and sent it over to the customer to see what they want to do with the single stage slash enhancement. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 1st of August, and we've been in for a little while. I've been upstairs and sorted all your orders. Thank you very much. Scott has taken the wheels off the car and done the interior already. We've still got to clean up those mats and the reason for that is 
we're waiting on some feedback from the customer on the paint inspection we did yesterday. Between the customer making the booking with us and then making it to us, they had a small impact with a deer. Mm. And obviously the vehicle's been maintained by the garage, so we've got basic wash marine, basic defects in there, plus some body shop stuff. I will take you around and show you what's in there, but Scott this morning has just quickly been looking at this arch. Let me take you over and show you the difference between what he's been doing and something on this door. So Scott's done the top of this arch and this lower bit here, just using a yellow-yellow combination, so we haven't even really gone for deep body shop removing stuff. But just to show you, here's like the basic wash marine that we've got in the door. And then as we come over here, you can see we tape up the lines for machining. So this is what Scott's machined. As it shows you, you've got nice paint there, looking good. Come over here and you can see where they never taped up. So that is their buffer trail when they were over here. Now coming down, we're going to have to improve the combination just a little bit. I'm not sure if the camera's picking up, but you can see there. And we're just going to do the arch now, and you can see that's where their sanding marks are still. So this is what the whole lower of this arch was like. That kind of sanding marks and DA damage. Right the way across this lip, and the whole lower arch was like that. I'll zoom this in for you, hopefully we'll get some focus. So that is what the whole front end has pretty much been like. So Scott's going to tackle this. I'll take you around the rest of the car. You can see, in here, Wing! Oh, this little light seems to pick up really good. Come on, focus, come on, focus, come on. There we go. So, there is lots of DA sanding on the corners where they haven't managed to get their machine, just like I've shown you on the Mustang vlog. But if we come up here on the bonnet, you can see they have machined to manage to get the DA out, but they've left buffer trail in there, which is standard stuff. You know, most of these guys probably gone at this with wool. Um, and Will, you're gonna leave a damage like this anyway. So we've got this all over the bonnet to remove as well. And just like on the Mustang one, explaining to you guys, all the tight edges are still full of defects too. So the bonnet stuff is from actually having stone chips repaired and I think the other side is where the deer impact is. Still get the paint depth gauge out and do a full survey of the non-painted areas to see what we've got challenging with. But because the paint depth gauge we've got at the moment is uh, just tells us how much paint we've got. These areas are painted. So the readings are crazy. So very quick review of the rest of the car. You can see there is buffer trail in this bit where the body shops come over. Or if I remember rightly when I surveyed the customer, yep, there's DA pig sanding right up to the edge here. So it's just because they've machined down here perfect left buffer trail, but they've come all the way up and then just not got close enough. So we'll tape that up and get in there with the hybrid and get that nice and tight, nice uniform finish on the Jaguar sign. Hopefully the two-stage polish of the enhancement can tackle it. Then majority of it is just basic wash marine and swirls like you can see on the top of here. Wash marine and swirlies, 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 wash marine and swirlies, swirly, swirly and swirlies. So there's no real reason to show you around the whole car. It's just going to be pavilions of gigabytes of you going, it's swirly mari, swirly, swirly mari. What you really want to see is uh, us machining it. Oh, nice track. Let's go. Good morning. It is Thursday and I am back in the shop after having the Wednesday off. Quick look around the car and the brief is Scott has got all the sides done and a little bit of the bonnet. So it's time for me to complete the bonnet, the pillars and the roof.
Okay, stop the time lapse, and I think it was going on quite long, and I wanted to break down and chat to you guys about the process I was using on the bonnet. First of all, you can see I was edging right in these areas because there's lots of pigtail in there, so I was using the spot pad first, microfiber, but sometimes I have to use the blue uh, foam pad because it rotates better on the curve and you get a nice more rounded finish when chasing out them deeper scratches and DA pigtails. Then I used the larger one to fill in the edges, gaps, so just to get the bigger areas. I've just been doing some leaning over to do this bit, so I've got to buff that off. But I stopped this time lapse as a customer came in, so I haven't buffed that off yet. And it's been a bit of a rupees day today. Trying out the new microfiber pads, I had a good play with these at Waxstock, and I've managed to grab myself some samples. Thank you very much, Rupees UK. Ding! And these are en route to AM Details, so we're going to be selling them anyway, so I thought I might as well get used to using them and see what they're like. And you know what? I'm really impressed. I only have the fine in the spot pad, but for me, this is a cracking little pad. I'm finding it quite hard to stall it out. And what I mean by that is when I'm machining nice and flat, and then I come to an angle, the pad's still rotating. So I'm able to get a nice little edge on the curves on the car. So doing the little words in there. But on the bigger pads, I have the cutting one and it is super good smashing through the sanding marks that are left in this bonnet. Usually, I wouldn't be microfibering a bonnet like this after a re-spray job. I try and do the best I can, so I would use either green foam pad or yellow foam pad. But I'm needing to batter through, plus I want to test out the microfiber system, and I think you can see, it's pretty good. So what else is on the bench? I've got my two polishes. People ask me why do I use the smaller bottles now. It's because I'm trying to keep my work area cleaner. So if you use the smaller bottles, they take up less room. Plus, I think it's easier to shake these up and squirt out the polish than it is to use the big ones and they do the comedy and go everywhere. This stuff is becoming my new tipple. I just, I just can't stop, not touch. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, a little addiction of mine I have to get over at the minute. This is the new claw, which I thought was like, I'm not gonna lie, a gimmicky thing from Bigfoot, but I'm actually really enjoying it. It's got the brush tool for helping clear out your pads. Really nice to hold on to. This is super handy for ripping the pads off. You know when you use some pads and you go rip them off and the glue comes or whatever? I never have that situation anyway because I don't work very uh, fast on my rupees. But I was speaking to a lot of people at Waxdoc who were talking about how they delaminate pads. This is super handy for just getting under there and ripping off that pad. Also, at Waxdoc, when I was having my playtime and all of you guys came and watched me, very much under pressure. I couldn't prime my pads with my gloves. Usually I just uh, prime my pad and use my hand to rub it in, but I like to wear gloves for doing that. I don't want to do it with my normal hand. So Matt was saying you can use this tool, which I thought was really cool. So you just kind of slap your polish onto here or onto here, then just rub it in like that. And it was really, really handy. That's what I did at Waxdoc. So very cool little tool. Apparently though, I, um, I, I like to let it slip, slip out my hand. So I'll give that a quick blast with the air blower in a minute. And then my final little wax stock pickup is the Rupes pen torch. I've never used this thing. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I actually avoided it as um, Jim White kind of reviewed it and he wasn't overly keen on the bit of kit, but I don't know if it's because of the lighting I have in here is different to his place or how I'm using it is different to that or personal preference, which is the excellent thing about detailing. But I've been using it in this whole video to show you guys the, um, the nice shots on the paintwork. And I like it as a torch. I mean, that's that area where there was all that DA sanding before I was showing you in the bureau. Brings it up really nice. So I'm quite glad I grabbed one of these. And I remember ages ago when Jim was talking about using the pennies and using these, he said it was super handy because you can just do the old and it grabs on there. But I'm not going to put anything in my pockets on this because I'm worried about them, you know, rubbing up against the paintwork and stuff. But it's a really cool little torch, and again, I've ordered a load of these to come into M Details. Alan, you seem to be a massive rupees advocate at the moment. What's going on? Well, you might remember back on my social media, Dave from Rupees UK came up and seen me, and then I've been hanging out with the guys at Waxhawk and stuff. I've been working on some big things with rupees to do with Scotland, to do with this area, to do with AM Details, the brand. And also with working with the IDA, I've just been trying to lift the standards at AM Detail and get the training better for me and the whole entire team. So, I needed a penny as it's part of the idea, you know, keep yourself clean thing. I've been hanging out with the Rupees guys and I'm now gonna be selling the stuff, yes, but I'm not selling the stuff as in, I'm gonna be on your Facebook groups, I'm gonna be on Amazon, I'm gonna be eBay, and you guys are gonna be going, who's this cheapest for selling Rupees? 
don't come and see me. That is not me, that is not what we're about. They're just gonna be on the website, guys. I'm gonna love it if you all share with your friends saying you can get them here, that would be amazing. But we're not out there to compete with the big resellers that already do it. The reason we have it is because hopefully soon we're gonna be doing rupees based training here and we can't do the training and then not supply the gear. So that is why over the past while I've been saying all them things in the vlog like, oh, something epic's happened, but oh no, I can't tell you about it yet. And I'm not entirely sure how much I can tell you. But after Waxstock, I know I'm allowed to tell you that that is the direction I am heading in to be a big part of the IDEA UK and to be doing more with Rupes UK and the whole entire brand. But it's slow baby steps. I cannot wait until I can confirm everything with you all. So if you are after any <laughs> Rupes gears, then it will be linked in the description down below and you can come and check us out. I will keep you guys all up to date on the training. Also, there is a link in the description down below that says, you know, we're going to be starting training soon or doing something, join this mailing list. If you join that mailing list, then the moment I have any information on the training we're going to be doing, potentially with Rupes and something to do with the IDA, I will email that emailing list first. So with that waffling stage of what's on my bench, Rupes and a little bit of what's going on in the future, I'm going to smash this bonnet. I'll see you guys in a bit. Good morning. It's the Friday, and I'm not gonna lie, that took me the majority of yesterday, plus some little finishing touches. But this morning, we're on the pillars and windows. I was thinking to myself, oh, this will clean up nice. Nope, that's actually water etching on the windows. So I've got to tackle them this morning before G1. You can see the black pillars, just need a quick going over. I've done these ones. Da -ding, da -ding. Then once I've done them, it's clean up the entire bay and coatings. Customer was in yesterday and they are delighted. So we we're gonna pick that one up on the Monday. It's been a weird one this one, hasn't it? But with the staff holidays, leave, stuff like that, and us being as flat out as we are, whoo, we're gonna need some staff soon. So hopefully, let's batter this one out. I'll show you some cool B-roll. And as a cheeky little surprise, we've just had Andy in picking up an autosave order. Remember guys, you can check them out at all these places. They stock name range. Bye Andy. It is Saturday. Hello, how you doing? Had a bit of a nightmare on that one yesterday. Can't remember if I shown you the glass, but it was horribly water spotted and water etched. I actually took a two stage polish on all the glass. And it has the, uh, there we go, full blown panoramic sunroof. It was a lot of work. But finally, got that episode up. I've just been using Jim White's new cradle. Ding! Nice bit of gear that, buddy. I'm not gonna tidy up this unit as I'm waiting on the G1 on the windows. with a minute left on the timer. Ding! Unaware really how this vlog has turned out and how chaotic I feel the past few have been 
with the fantastic stuff that's been like wax sock and all the other things. I wanted to cover a few little things in this vlog with today being the 5th of August, Saturday. Now the reason I give the date is I used to do these vlogs exactly a week after they were filmed but recently with how everything's been going on with Dan being so busy and me being here, there, everywhere and working on these projects that I've been saying I'm not allowed to tell you about them but now you kind of have a rough idea what's going on with them. The YouTube channels got very scattered. I'm making a big mental effort that from when I come back from my trip away, they're going to be back on track and the how-tos are en route. So let's grab a coffee. I'll tell you all about it. G-Mug! Oh. That is a good brew. So as you guys know, this here channel has been epic and a couple of other things has meant that AM details kind of went do 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 handled by us fine <laughs> crazy customer service that we're providing is obviously really good this is helping us spread the media but you will see it has got so busy and so crazy that some of the media is getting missed <gasps> and that is basically because I am overloaded I'm gonna say it yes I am I'm overloaded and we've known this for a little while there is a member of staff teed up to join Woohoo! and there's been lots of other things going on like when I was chatting to you in the vlogs like I said before and I was going all oh, the stuff I can't talk to you about it was the IDA stuff and what's happening with us with Rupes and then the sort of things that happen I can keep you up to date on the website but really you seeing me sat on the phone with a web designer and doing some designing stuff hasn't really been that epic so I've always been feeling that these vlogs are dropping a bit and um, that I've been feeling a little bit flat in my kind of creativity I suppose but these vlogs were never really initially designed to be woohoo, a creative amazingness. They were just meant to be uh, this is what's happening at AM Details point of view. So it still is what's going on here. It's just what's going on is mayhem. But really none of this is a negative. It's actually um, someone commented on the interview with Nick Nimmin, which by the way I'll pop up here. Ding! Someone commented saying they're really good problems to have. They are. Due to you guys and everything else just being amazing. I am finding new problems in business that I didn't know how to handle and some old problems where I was on my own and I never had enough time so then I got staff members and then I had to train them and then get people to take over. Some of them old problems are coming back where I'm not keeping systems tight and there isn't literally enough manpower to keep up with the demand which are epic problems to have Ding! but over the next few months we're going to be tackling them. Oh there is something huge I cannot wait to share but I can't do it until the project is complete. Oh, don't you just hate when people do that? But yeah, I am. I cannot wait to share something else with you. Actually, it just popped in my head. <laughs> I know. I'm really sorry. I just did that thing everyone hates when I say this is a big coming and don't tell you anything about it. Woohoo! Camera's falling. But in other epic news, there is a new member of staff coming, and I will reveal them in the vlog when they are ready to be revealed. Smoke and glitter and stuff. The bread and butter AMD magic will get nailed and we will get it tightened back down so that everything is super cool. The website guru that is Dave is back on holiday next week, back from holiday next week. So then hopefully we can tackle the last of the website stuff and then that is just going to make mine and Jamie's life so much easier. Whew. Which is then going to free up time so that we can provide a better customer service for you guys. Well not a better one, I think we provide a great customer service. The problem is we're running out of time providing that service, which is meaning I'm having to work a billion hours on Sunday nights just to do this stuff. And meh, that's life, that's business, but it then gets you down, gets you tired, and when you come to Kickstart the next week, whew, you start running on this stuff. And I think you guys have picked up, I've been running cold, hard, at it, whoosh, for a good two, three months now, but the projects are nearly finished. They're so good. So, in other epic news, Next week is my last week here for a week, so next week we have an Astra in and a couple of protection details. I'm really looking forward to doing this Astra, actually, a silver one coming in for enhancement. Uh, a couple of protection details and then I am off for the big family road trip. We're going to head off down to England and we're going to show off Jacob to all the grands and stuff that can't travel up here. And then we're going back to Fife, my hometown, to go and visit family and again show Jacob around to the family members that cannot make it all the way up here to Elgin. And then when I get back after that trip, I'm not going to set myself up for fail, so probably give me a week, then after that week, boom, it's on, everything will be back to normal, everything will be super duper cool, and I'm hoping the majority of these projects oh, will be complete. So as I said earlier, it is Saturday, the 5th of August, 
the car's getting picked up on a Monday, but it's 20 past one. I'm not gonna start doing the big tidy up, dust might reset on the car, etc. So I'm gonna do the front of the shop, I'm gonna do here, gonna do shopping, put all this paperwork into my bag because I'll be working out on Sunday night. So for now, we're gonna play a little bit of music. See you guys on Monday with the B-roll. guys i hope you have enjoyed it this is amd where we bring you car care and detail related videos every week please guys do subscribe and make sure you smash that bell so you get a notification every time we drop a video or go live which will be happening again soon to answer all your detailing questions plus huh over here two videos chosen just for you ciao